Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to talk about server sent events, which is one of the techniques you can use to automatically push data to your client from your server in real time. Now, in a previous video that I made, I talked about WebSockets, which is uh, sort of the same thing, but a key distinction with WebSockets and server sent events is that WebSockets is a bi directional uh, communication, meaning that both the server can push data and the client can also push data back to the server. Whereas server sent events, as the name implies, is unidirectional. It's only uh, for situations where you only want the data coming from the server, but you never have data coming back from the client. So in this video, we're going to do a super quick tutorial on how to get up and running with server sent events using Nest.js. And then we're also going to take a look at the event source API, which is the interface that you're going to use on the client side to basically subscribe to events from the server. All right, so I have a terminal here open to my desktop and I'm just gonna use the Nest.js CLI to create a new application. So I'm gonna do Nest new SSE demo. So this is the name of my project. I'll hit enter here, it'll install. All right, after that completes, we'll open up the code in VS Code and we'll go into app.controller.ts and this is where we're gonna start adding some stuff, right? All right, so what we're going to do here first is we're going to do, let's create a new method. Let's call send event. And then we're going to add a decorator here using SSE. And then we have to provide a string in here, which as you can see on the documentation here is the path. So we'll, let's just call this event. So structurally, it's very similar to just like any other controller route, right? Except that instead of you uh, specifying the HTTP method, you specify the SSE decorator with a path, right? Like similarly, this also takes in a path. All right, so let's delete this so that we can focus on the SSE event here. Now, one of the things that Nest.js requires for SSE events is that you're returning an observable. And as you can see in Nest.js, we use RxJS observables, which is already installed. It's one of the dependencies that Nest.js uses. And then we have to specify the shape of the data that we're gonna return to the client. So let's define real quick an interface and let's call this message event. And let's just say that there's data in here that is a string or perhaps it could also be an object, right? So we'll take this message event and we'll put it in here, which basically says that our SSC method here returns something of this shape, right? So we need to return something that has data in it and some string. Now there's a missing piece in here because it can't just be this event. It needs to be unobservable. So we're going to pull a couple of things from RxJS to pull this off. And you don't need to really be that aware of what RxJS is or even what an observable is. That's something that I can probably cover at another video. Let me know uh, if you're interested in that. But anyways, let me write a few lines of code here and I'll explain what it does. So I'm going to pull an interval from RxJS and I'm going to pass in 1000 in here. Now, what this does is basically it's going to, on an interval, return a number, right? And we're saying every second, so this is a thousand milliseconds, it's going to return a number. So you can imagine that at every second, it's going to go zero, one, two, right? And I'll go keep doing that forever, every second. And what we're going to do with that is we'll take each number we'll pipe it and then we'll, we'll basically map the number to some kind of uh, string or object, right? So we'll do map. And again, these are all coming from RxJS. So make sure to import map from RxJS. So again, remember this is returning a, a number every second. So, so this is actually taking in a value, let's call num, which is a number. And we're just gonna map that to a string Let's do hello plus num, right? So what we expect to happen here is again, every second it's gonna return a number and then we're mapping that to a string that just says hello and that number. So you can imagine that every second it's gonna do hello zero, hello one, hello two, and so on, right? Like it just keeps going. So basically we're just keep, we're gonna keep pinging whoever the client is that is connected to us. And we're going to keep saying hello, zero, one, two, and so on. All right. And honestly, that's the basics of what you need to know 
in terms of creating a service sent event. You just need to create a method in a controller and you need to return a observable of some kind of shape, right? And now we're gonna create a client that we're gonna use to test this out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm just gonna call this client. And within that folder, I'm gonna create an index.html, right? And within this index.html, we're just gonna create a script, right? And this is where we're gonna, where we're gonna connect to our server in a little bit here. But first, before we do that, what we're gonna do is we need a way to actually serve up this, this index.html. So an easy way to do that is using the serve static module. So we're gonna do npm install dash dash save at nsjs slash serve static. Once you have that installed, we're gonna go to app module and then we're just gonna add an import in here from serve static. And we're gonna say that we're gonna serve up whatever is in our client folder, which is just our index.html. Now the catch is it's gonna do this at the base route of our server. So we need to change our app controller here to have its own you know, API base path so that it doesn't conflict with that. So we're just gonna add API here. And this will, will make sense in, in a little bit. All right, so now in our index.html, what we're gonna do is, as I mentioned earlier, there is the event source API, which is the API that you can use to basically subscribe to service sent events. And it's actually pretty simple. We're just gonna do event source equals new event source. And all you need to pass in here is the path to the thing that you're subscribing to, right? So we said that we have a base path of API. And then if we go back to our app controller, we see that we also have a path here of event. So what we need is slash API slash event. And then this pretty much makes a persistent connection to the server and we can just subscribe to uh, the event of a message. So we're gonna do event source on message. Now there's a payload that comes in here and then and then within the method is where we actually, you know, handle it. So this payload is actually the same shape as this interface that we had on the service side, the message event. So we can just destructure the data here. And what we'll do with this is just that every time a message comes in, we're gonna create a new li HTML element and then we'll just add uh, the data in there as the text of it. So we'll do message.innerText and then we'll just pass in data, right? So we expect data here to be what we're returning here, which is gonna be, you know, hello and then a number every one second. And then as we create these elements and we fill in the text of it, we're just gonna add that to the document body. All right, and then at this point, we can probably run our application and see everything running. So let's do npm run start dev. Now, when I go to localhost 3000, what that's gonna do is it's gonna make that connection, right? It's gonna do event source on slash API slash event. And then as you can see, we're automatically subscribed and we're adding a new message at each push, right? And let me refresh just so you can see again. Cool, so we're, we're basically done with the tutorial at this point. So there's really not much more to learn. There is one gotcha that you need to understand though. So you'll see on the event source the documentation and MDN, they have a warning in here that says, uh, if you're not using HTTP2, one of the problems with SSE is that there's a max of six connections. So let me kind of show what the problem is. So right now we have effectively one connection. So I'm gonna open up six tabs to localhost 3000. So as you can see right now, I have six tabs open on localhost 3000 and they're all subscribing to the events. Notice what happens when I open up another one. You can see that here it just spins, like it fails to, to connect because once you reach the six connections, it basically kind of stops from there. So if you're trying to compare this with WebSockets, that's probably one of your, your major considerations is you know, can you use HTTP2 with your application? Now, one of the benefits that I see comparing with WebSockets is that it's just, it's dead simple, right? It, like it really didn't take us that much time to get up and running. And you know, it's very simple to connect and close. There's a pretty good documentation here. And again, the only catch is really, if you can't use HTTP2, then there's a very low number of connections that you can make. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Super quick tutorial. Hopefully it was interesting to you. Let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts or feedback.